Greetings my dear friend, my name is Maxim and welcome to my channel. And today we are going to be discussing general pharmacology, namely absorption, distribution, biotransformation, elimination, P450 enzymes and pharmacodynamics. Please enjoy the video and without further ado, let's dive into it. Diffusion is a movement of the molecules across a membrane. Diffusion is proportional to the solubility of the drug, the concentration gradient and the surface area. It is worth mentioning that diffusion is inversely related to thickness of the membrane and molecular weight of a drug. The concentration gradient is a driving force, but solubility is the main feature of a drug that let it move between compartments, surface area or vascularity of an organ, decreased perfusion or an obstructed artery denies delivery of the drug. Size of the drug, every drug is too big to diffuse through the plasma membrane. Free fraction means how much of the drug is in protein bound state. Transport across cell membranes can be passive or facilitated, in which case we do not use ATP and the movement from high to low concentration. The only difference is that in facilitated diffusion we use a carrier protein. Important point is that proteins can become saturated. Active transport is another option where we do use ATP molecules. The examples are primary active transporters like sodium potassium antiphases or secondary active transporters like sodium glucose co-transporters. Important features of carrier transporters. First of all, stereospecificity, which means carrier protein can easily transfer D-glucose, but it cannot transfer L-glucose configuration. Every protein has its own transport maximum. For example, if we increase a glucose concentration in our plasma to the certain point where proximal convoluted tubular cells cannot transfer further glucose, it eventually will end up into urine. And the last but not least, competition. Galactose can compete with glucose for transportation inside the cells. Diffusion can be measured using the following equation. Flow equals to permeability multiplied by area multiplied by concentration 1 minus concentration 2. Permeability describes the ease with which a solute diffuses through a membrane. The pill is swallowed and the time is started. There is a lag between administration and measurable plasma levels of the drug. The time period of absorption is from the moment the drug is detectable until the peak concentration concentration maximum. A time point of which concentration maximum is reached is called Tmax. Elimination is from concentration maximum to the moment it becomes undetectable. Minimum effective concentration Mac, is the duration of action of a single dose is defined by the time between when it reaches the Mac on the way up and the time it reaches the MAC on the way down. First path – Metabolism The fact that any drug absorbed anywhere from the stomach to the rectum is absorbed into the portal circulation, goes to the liver before getting to the peripheral veins, which means that the liver processes the drug. Bioavailability is a percentage of drug that reaches circulation relative to the IV dose. If the relative dose required via a given route of administration to get the same effect as an IV dose. New dose has to be given before the minimal effective concentration and the area below MAC is the area which determines no effectiveness of a drug. 
Distribution of the movement from the blood to the tissues. Free drug not bound to albumin can leave plasma and exert its effect by getting into tissues. Important notes. Oral vancomycin does not go to the blood, as well as IV vancomycin doesn't go to the gut lumen. We can determine volume of distribution by the following equation. Drug dose administered divided by plasma concentration level of a drug. Things affecting volume of distribution. First of all, permeability barriers, like for example tight junctions in the central nervous system do not allow any drug to easily pass them. Secondly, pH of compartments. Negatively charged molecules can move easily, whereas positively charged cannot. Thirdly, increased binding to albumin means decreased volume of distribution, as well as increased molecular weight decreases volume of distribution. Fat solubility increases volume of distribution. Increased IV concentration decreases volume of distribution, as well as decreases onset of action. Important points. Redistribution. Drug like phenobarbital goes to adipose tissues and after that slowly released into the blood. Increase the dose, increase toxicity. Loading dose equals plasma concentration level of a substance multiplied by volume of distribution. By the way, if we are dealing with liver or kidney diseases, we don't have to adjust loading dose. Maintenance dose equals plasma concentration level of a substance multiplied by clearance. Clearance is the volume of plasma cleared per unit time, or rate of elimination divided by plasma concentration of a substance. And now let's discuss metabolism and biotransformation. Basically, biotransformation means a creation of more water-soluble substances. Inactivation is the production of inactive compound from an active one. Activation is a conformation from prodrug to an active drug and alternation is a build-up of toxic metabolites. There are two phases in biotransformation. Phase 1 uses cetachrome P450 enzymes. It is irreversible alternation at polar groups like hydroxyl, sulfur, amine, carboxyl and easily eliminated. Overall reaction of hydrolysis. Phase 2 is all about adding large polar compounds. It is reversible, there is no conformational change, conjugation and glucuronidation, like UTP glucuronyl transferase. Important notes cytochrome P450 enzymes are inhibited by acute alcohol consumption, but in chronic state liver actually induces P450 enzymes, which means increased processing of drugs. There are inducers and inhibitors of P450 enzymes. You can use a silly mnemonic like Crab GPs spent all day on sickfaces.com. Crab GPs stands for carbamazepine, rifampicin, alcohol, phenytoin, griseofolvin, phenobarbital, sulfa, neoureus, plus San John's Wart. Those are inducers. On the other hand, Sickfaces.com stands for sodium valproate, isoniazide, cinicidine, ketoconazole, fluconazole, amiodarone, chloramphenicol, erythromycin, sulfonamides, ciprofloxacin, omeprazole, and metronidazole plus grapefruit juice. Importantly, there are several P450 enzymes subtypes that actually we have to know. First of all is 1A2, which metabolites acetaminophen, 2E1 for ethanol, 2C9 for warfarin, 2D6 for cardio drugs, and 3A4 is the most common one, it's for statins. Clearance is a measurement of the volume of plasma from which a substance is completely removed per unit time. Urinary clearance is a clearance achieved by the kidneys. By the way, inulin is used 
as a filtration marker or a GFR. Clearance equals filtration plus secretion minus absorption. For most drugs, which are not freely filtered, the filtration is not GFR, but a fraction of GFR, free fraction. Only free fraction not bound to albumin in the plasma gets filtered. Theoretical filtration equals percentage of free fraction multiplied by GFR. Actual clearance or measured clearance equals drug concentration we administered divided by time. If actual clearance is more than theoretical, we are dealing with secretion. If actual less than theoretical, we are dealing with absorption. The half-life is how much time it takes to remove half of the drug from the body. Imagine situation like this. We administered a drug to a patient in concentration of 100%. After first half-life, we end up with 50% of a drug in a, our patient's plasma. We administered another 100% of a drug. And after second half-life, we are dealing with 75% of a plasma concentration of a drug. After that, we repeat several times the same action and at the fourth half-life we end up with approximately 94% of steady state of a drug concentration in a patient's plasma. So let's deal with the following question. If a drug has a half-life of 6 hours, how long will it take for a drug to reach 94% of its plasma steady concentration. So 94% means we are dealing with force half life and we have to multiply 4 by 6 which equals to 24 hours. Primary order kinetics has enough enzymes to accommodate more drug to be eliminated where zero-order kinetics has not enough enzymes to accommodate more drug. The system is maximized because all the enzymes were saturated. It doesn't matter how much substrate you have, the rate of reaction is already maximized, so adding more substrate won't do anything. Zero-order kinetics, as we said before, has saturated enzymes. It is usually responsible for toxins accumulation and dealing with alcohol, aspirin and phenytoin. There is no steady state and variable half-life. On the other hand, first order kinetics has not saturated enzymes. Adding more drugs means increased rate of removal of a drug. It usually removes certain percentage of a drug per unit at time and has a constant half-life. Zero order plots a constant slope on a regular graph or goes concave on a log graph, whereas first order constant slope on a log graph or convex on a regular one. Half-life equals 0.7 divided by k, whereas k is elimination. Clearance equals K multiplied by volume of distribution, whereas volume of distribution is a dose we administered divided by plasma concentration level of a drug. The range between 4 and 8 is considered low for volume of distribution. Clearance is directly related to volume of distribution and elimination, and it is inversely related to half-life. Elimination is inversely related to half-life as well. Clearance equals volume of distribution multiplied by 0.7. G-protein coupled receptors. For example, epinephrine activates beta-1 adrenergic receptors, which leads to G-stimulatory protein activation. G-stimulatory protein, by the way, consists of alpha, beta and gamma subunits. Alpha subunit detaches 
from beta and gamma after GTP activation and leads to excitation of adenylized cyclase, which is responsible for conversion of cyclic AMP from ATP and final activation of protein kinase A, which phosphorylate calcium channels and leads to a massive influx of calcium inside the cell. Vice versa, acylcholine can activate muscarinic receptor type 2, which coupled with G inhibitory protein, its alpha subunit inactivates adenylate cyclase, whereas beta and gamma subunits lead to massive efflux of potassium outside the cell. Furthermore, epinephrine can activate alpha-1 adrenergic receptors, which coupled with GQ protein and eventual phospholipase C activation and production of IP3 and DAG. And stimulation of protein kinase C. Potency is the strength of a drug at a particular dosage, and it is usually moves horizontally on a graph. Drug A achieves maximum effect at a lower dosage, whereas drug B achieves maximum effect at a higher dosage. Efficacy is the maximum effect that can be achieved by a drug, and it moves vertically. The higher it is, the more efficacy. On the, our final example, drug A is the closest to the left, which means highest affinity and highest potency, whereas drug B is furthest to the right, which means lowest affinity and lowest potency, but A and B drugs both have the same efficacy, whereas drug C is the lowest one on the y-axis, which means decreased binding sites. And finally, competitive inhibitors binds to active site of enzyme, effectively decrease affinity of the enzyme for the substrate. These sorts of inhibitors are reversible and can be outcompeted if more substrate is added. We can get back to normal Vmax. Non-competitive inhibitors bind irreversibly to the enzyme and a site that is not the active binding site. It's referred to as allosteric. Enzymes amount decreases, thus Vmax decreases. Activators rise the amount of enzymes or upregulation of their function. Well, this is all what I have for you today. If you found this lecture helpful, please leave a like, comment down in the comment section and subscribe to the channel. I wish you a very lovely day and see you guys in the next lecture. Goodbye.